Question number two, Al, it is to find the derivative of an inverse function using chain rule. Now, I will be very, very honest. This is the one topic which I get confused so often, you know, but I'll try to make you understand, uh, you know, thoroughly about this uh, because it's not an easy topic. It's, you know, to understand this, you need to realize what exactly is inverse, how this is working and all that. And you need to memorize one formula as well. So I will write things down, try to understand it. But then I will tell you the shortcut method as well. Shortcut in the sense, uh, you know, not that shortcut. You need to know the basic things. Okay. But I'll tell you, explain in detail what this exactly means. Because I am sure many, many of you are still confused with this particular topic. Okay, so now I'll tell you in detail how this works. First of all, here let's read the question and understand. They have told, let me first change the color to brown. Okay, f as an inverse g. Okay, so what this means is f inverse is equal to g. This is given to us. Okay, and we need to find the derivative of this inverse function g at particular value a. Okay, it's very complicated, right? And they have just given us the function f of x. Okay, and they have told this inverse is g and this we need to solve. How can we do it? There is an important formula for that. The formula goes like this. I hope I'm correct. It is g dash. Let me just reduce the thickness over here. Of the marker. Okay, g dash of any value. Okay, I'll write x. Oh, uh, yeah, obviously g dash of x equals 1 by derivative of f of and then what happens is okay i'm just okay it's g of x i need to double check this because uh, that's what you know uh, comes to my mind but let me just try this properly it's derivative of f f dash of g of x okay this is the formula let me just double check this formula Yes, derive it you. Yes, I'm very happy that I got it right. Okay. Now, the, the thing is, in my mind, the uh, explanation for this flows, but it's hard to, you know, particularly explain this one topic. I really don't like to explain this topic. That's me being very honest, because I don't know why, because out of all the topics, this is something that confuses me so often, you know. Now, let us understand what exactly is inverse. So I know this is the function f, is there f of x, okay? No, let me just write f, okay? Let me go back. And imagine we have x and y values and the inverse is given as g, right? The inverse g or that is f inverse basically. What does this mean? If this is x and y, the inverse would swap itself, isn't it? Y and X over here. So if I have X as 2 and Y as 3, here it will be 3 and 2. Don't you agree? So what I will do is, because I want to write both in terms of X and Y, okay? I will write this as XF, YF. And this as XG, YG. Because always the x value is the first value, next will be y, x, y, even over here, x, y. But since inverse, if this, whatever is there, is equal to the last term. So now what, what you need to understand here is, let me just change this. Whatever is this on um, this value will be equal to this value. And whatever is over here in this value will be equal over here. Okay. From this, we can now try to explore a few things g of x we need to find the derivative of a what is that value a is given as minus one this is basically like g dash of x right for from the inverse this is related to inverse so what value do we know i will erase the top uh, functions x and y this i'll just erase now what what value do you know x value of what g x value of g so i will write it here that is a is the x value of g, which is given to us minus 1. Minus 1 is known. If x is minus 1, what happens over here in the given function? The y value is also minus 1. Now, whatever is this value, these both will be equal. So this is the basic understanding. Okay. 
I'm very happy. I didn't get confused when I, you know, told that. Um, so now, how can we, what, what can we understand from here? I have the function f that is only over here. This one is related to the inverse. So this a value from the inverse, it's x of inverse. So basically it is the y value of this function. So f of x equals f of x, when you input x, that must be equal to y, that is minus 1. This is the concept. Now, if I substitute over here g of the inverse function of minus 1, I will get some answer which I don't know yet, okay, but that will be the this value. So, here we know f of x must be equal to minus 1, okay. What is the x value? We have this equation f of x, so I'll substitute over here x cube plus 4x minus 1 must be equal to minus 1. Now I need to solve for x. So whatever the x value is there, I will write it over here. That is the concept behind this. So here, now to find this x, there are various values. What you generally start is substitute 0 as x. Over here, if I put 0, it will be 0 plus 0 minus 1 equals minus 1. So x is equal to 0. Another way is there is the coefficient method that is basically, you know, uh, you should know what is the leading coefficient and this term and then based on that you can do it. But generally always start with zero. Even there is calculator method. I'll show you that that's the easiest method. Let's take our calculators. So here what you basically do is type this equation as it is alpha x cube plus 4x. Oh, sorry, I have to press this plus 4x minus 1 equals minus 1. Shift and solve. What is the x value? It's 0. So only when you press 0, this will be balanced, right? So answer is 0. Okay. So x value is 0. So now this x of the function is 0. We found this was y value was given minus 1. It's really inverse is x, but that is equal to y uh, function's y value. Now if this is 0, then these two are same, isn't it? x, y becomes y, x. So this will be equal over here. So just again, these two values will be equal to each other and these two n2 values are equal. That's about the inverse, okay? Now we know lots of values. Let's try to solve this formula. Is it possible now? Let's try. We need to solve g dash of x that is given over here as negative 1. That will be equal to 1 by f inverse of g of x. Now, g of what? g of minus 1, basically, okay? Now, this is the thing. What is g of minus 1? From here, you can see g of x would be equal to y, isn't it? That is the main reason why we solve this. So, here, if you look at the inverses, whatever is the x value for this function will be the y value for the inverse. So g of x basically is 0. See, here if you substitute x, if g of minus 1 will be equal to 0. So what happens over here? g dash of inverse minus 1 equals 1 by f derivative of this particular value 0. Now what's remaining? You need to find the derivative of this function because we have f dash. We don't have derivative. f dash of x is we it will be 3x squared plus 4. Now, instead of x, we need to substitute 0 over here because this was 0 over here. And uh, g of minus 1 was 0. And now f inverse of 0 is what? It is basically substitute 0 here. It will be 4. So the answer of f inverse of 0, this entire thing, is equal to 4. 1 by 4 is the correct answer. That is the derivative of the inverse you can see 1 by 4 is the final answer now this is the method to actually do this this is i mean i have told you the entire understanding method i hope this is clear every time you need to understand why we are substituting what you know here why did we substitute this is equal to minus 1 because of these uh, what's written over here f g and everything i hope this is clear now this is the exact understanding of this problem okay 
Now, once you have understood that there, there can be some tricks to be done, if you are still getting confused with this, just by heart this. Whatever is given over here must be equal to this value. Now, let's do the second problem over here. Let's take out the calculator again. Whatever is given over here, the x value, right? See, it's alpha x to the power phi plus 4 alpha x minus 2 must be equal to minus 2 here. What is the answer? It's 0. Well, most of the time it will be 0 or sometimes it will be 1, minus 1, something like that. Just try. Uh, here, when you do it, you will directly get the answer, not to worry. Now, here also x is 0. So, we just have to write this equal to this given a value. So, we know this is equal to 0. So, what does that mean? See, here we need to solve 1 divided by whatever the answer you get. Shortcut. Direct. Okay. So, what happens is the derivative of this. Let me just put it over here. The derivative of this at 0. We got x value is equal to 0, right? Now, f dash of x where x is equal to 0. This needs to be found out, okay? Now, even another shortcut is by using the calculator shift and dy by dx. Put this alpha x to the power phi plus 4 alpha x minus 2 at x of 0. Whatever we initially get, this answer is 4. But 4 is not the answer. The derivative g of whatever they ask you here, yeah, it's minus 2, right? This will be 1 divided by f derivative, you know? So it will be 1 by whatever the answer you get. So this is it. So I will sum up the steps over here. I'll just do the last problem. Directly within two steps, you'll get this answer, shortcut. First step, whatever is given over here. Wait, let me just double check answer. It should be 1 fourth. Yes, that is 1 fourth. Okay. Now, let me just solve the last one over here. Let's get our calculators back. All you need to do is first, whatever is given to you, alpha x cube plus 2 alpha x plus 1 equals to given value minus 2. Shift and solve. The answer is negative 1. Here it's not 0, it changed. Now, let me just write that x equals negative 1. So derive this given function now, shift and dy by dx, alpha x cube plus 2 alpha x plus 1 at minus 1. What is the answer? Phi. The final answer will be 1 divided by phi. Let's just check. It's 1 by phi. This is the correct answer. This is how easily you can solve it up just with two steps. Always the inverse, it will not change. And you have only six, type of, uh, six problems in this uh, particular question. These are the last two. Over here, same concept. Let me do this last one. It seems a little big, right? Same thing. In calculator, I'll directly do it. Uh, one more thing before we solve. See, this formula is there, right? G dash of. You need to memorize that form. But since it's MCQ, you don't need that. But this is the standard formula. The derivation is not there, but you have to use this formula to derive, okay? Uh, now, without the formula, what happens is we, whatever answer we get, we just write it below. So step one would be whatever is given, that is the square root of alpha x to the power of phi plus four alpha x cubed plus three alpha x plus one make it equal to given value 3, shift and solve. What's the answer? It's 1. Now, you can write it down over here. x equals 1. Find the derivative at that particular point, f dash of 1. So what we do is shift and divide by dx, square root alpha x to the power of phi, now, if you have to derive, it would take some time, you know, because it's a square root function. You have to do 1 by 2 root x, multiply by entire derivation of inside functions. But it saves time in the calculator. Plus 3 alpha x plus 1. What is the x value? Not this. The answer what we just now found, x equals 1. So here, wait a minute. Um, uh, doesn't matter. Let's just check the answer. Okay, yeah, it's correct. Okay, I was just a little confused. Now here the answer 
of this one is 10 by 3. So what you do is the formula tells us g inverse of any value say a will be equal to 1 by okay I'm, I'm not gonna write the formula it's basically 1 divided by this answer okay f dash of a now not f dash of a let me write the formula f dash of g of a so we had found all this then it'll be finally f dash of uh, this thing g of a is basically 1 g of a is 1 so f dash of 1 is 10 by 3 it's 1 by 10 by 3 which will be equal to 3 comes up 3 by 10 or you can just do this thing inverse of this answer answer inverse is 3 by 10 so that's the final answer you can see over here that's the answer so this is how you solve this particular inverse problems. Very straightforward. The calculator method saves a lot of time. But for understanding, I told in detail at the beginning, you can uh, for understanding purpose. But then you can use the shortcut calculator method. Just those two steps, if you remember, you can easily get the answers. That's it in this particular question. I'll see you in the next video.